My name is Deborah Conrad, and I am the Entrepreneurial Mindset Profile Product Director. Thank you so much. It's a mouthful. Uh, I work at the Leadership Development Institute at Eckerd College in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I will be monitoring the chat today. You see some housekeeping there up on screen. And before I turn things over to Maggie Dunn, who's going to be doing the overview of the Entrepreneurial Mindset Profile, or EMP, I'll let you know that um, the first section is recorded. We'll have some live polling, and then at the end, live question and answer. So without further ado, I will turn it over to Maggie. Welcome, everybody. We are so pleased to have all of you with us today. We will start with a quick review of the many applications of the EMP. We use the EMP, as do many of our clients, for leadership development programs, especially those that have a focus on innovation, creativity, growth, or strategic direction. We use it for one-on-one -on -one leadership and executive coaching, and also for team building. This, this assessment is available in both individual and group report formats, so we'll show you what that looks like in a few minutes. We, it, the EMP is being used in career and workforce development programs in the community, community-based programs for aspiring entrepreneurs, university classes and institutional benchmarking, and then there are a variety of research streams underway about entrepreneurial mindset and entrepreneurial success that are using the EMP. And we look forward to telling you a bit about that and would love to engage with any of you who are interested in that. So corporate leaders, government leaders, small business leaders, entrepreneurs, all individuals who have benefited from the experience with the EMP. To date, over 30,000 individuals have completed the EMP, and we have over 525 certified practitioners representing 38 countries and U.S. territories. We have a thriving community of practice, and we'd be delighted if any of you are interested in joining that community. So we always like to start off by talking about what the EMP does and does not do. So the EMP does not produce an overall score that indicates, indicates whether you are or you are not entrepreneurial, and it doesn't tell you whether you should or should not become an entrepreneur. Rather, the EMP plots your scores on 14 distinct elements of entrepreneurial mindset against our exclusive normative data for both entrepreneurs and corporate managers, and then invites you to consider the ways in which you may want to enhance one or more elements of entrepreneurial thought or action. This is really a strength-based model. So we look at the strengths you have and areas that are relevant to you that you may want to enhance. And so the team at the Leadership Development Institute set out to discover how entrepreneurs in general differ from corporate managers and all the ways in which they differ, the team decided to call entrepreneurial mindset. And so the assessment helps you identify where you are most like entrepreneurs and we consider those your entrepreneurial strengths. And then also invites you to consider how those are working for you and where, if at all, you might want to move the needle. So the team quickly discovered in, in the research that entrepreneurial mindset is multifaceted. It's not an either or proposition or a single number like an IQ score, but more like a profile of various traits and abilities. So there are many ways to be entrepreneurial and every one of us is different. So we have a poll that we'd like to invite you to participate in and Deborah will put that up. We'd love to get your point of view on whether entrepreneurial mindset is purely genetic. Are you born with it? Is it purely learn something that, that uh, you start from scratch and can learn? Or is it a combination of both? So we'll give you a minute to respond. We see some responses coming in.
So thank you for that. We can go ahead and end the poll and, and uh, show the poll results. And I think you should all be able to see the poll at this point. So your responses of the 69% of you who view it as both, your thinking on this actually mirrors the thinking that we have developed through the research that some of the elements that distinguish entrepreneurs from non-entrepreneurs are probably a little more stable or hardwired. And we call those personality dimensions and others are a little more skills-based. So let's look at the personnel, those, the seven of the 14 dimensions on the EMP that are considered personality dimensions, the ones that are a little more hardwired include things like risk acceptance, independence, preference for limited structure. So could we teach someone who's most comfortable in a lower risk environment, for example, to recognize situations in which they could take greater risk? Yes, we probably could, and it might be helpful for that individual if they wanted to be more entrepreneurial, but we probably wouldn't change their overall orientation, their overall comfort level with risk. And so given the opportunity and when circumstances enabled it, they would very likely start to make some choices to get them back into kind of a risk management circumstance that felt a little more comfortable. So while you can move the needle on risk acceptance in each of these seven personality dimensions, and we'll show you all seven in just a moment, and we have suggestions for how you can move the needle and develop those if you want to, what we found is that on the personality dimensions of the assessment, the insights for clients tend to be more significant around fit, fit in terms of the kind of industry they might choose, fit in terms of the kind of role they might choose, fit in terms of timing of taking on an entrepreneurial endeavor relative to the amount of stability or financial security they've already established, et cetera. So more choices around fit often surface in this part of the assessment report. And then we move on to the other half, the other seven um, scales are referred to as skills-based and they include things like idea generation, future focus, persistence, things that are a little more, uh, a little easier to and more quickly develop. So for example, with idea generation, there are plenty of techniques designed to help people become more comfortable and adept at brainstorming. And we have found that with enough training and practice, those behaviors can become very well-versed and habitual and can be very well developed and sustained. And so let me unveil for you the, the full 14 scales and you can see that they are in categories there. One thing we like to point out is that the, the last uh, scale under skills is interpersonal sensitivity. You may notice that it is italicized. And the reason for that is it does differ from all the other scales in that it is the one scale of the 14 on which entrepreneurs on average score themselves lower than do corporate managers. So the difference between the two is statistically significant, as is the case for all of the scales. But in the case of interpersonal sensitivity, corporate managers on average score themselves higher than do entrepreneurs. And so compared to corporate managers, entrepreneurs describe themselves as a bit more abrasive, a bit harder to work with. There are probably a lot of reasons for that. We think it's probably because many entrepreneurs are very task focused and also because corporate managers tend to be rewarded for interpersonal sensitivity and it can actually be a derailleur if they don't show sensitivity to the people with whom they work. So those are the scales. We'll walk you through some more detail in just a moment. I did want to draw your attention to a published journal article that's available for any of you who have an interest in reading and understanding 
details about how the instrument was developed, the reliability, the validity, et cetera, you can access this journal article. So we've got another poll question for you, and that is, for whom is entrepreneurial mindset important? We'd like to see your thoughts on that. Is it important for managers, for entrepreneurs, for students, for everyone? What do you think? For whom is entrepreneurial mindset important? Well, thank you for playing. And I think we can display the results here. And with a group who signed up for this particular webinar, we're not surprised that, that we've got consensus around it being relevant for everybody. And we'll just say that our uh, research has indicated and our experience with clients really has indicated that the relevancy of entrepreneurial mindset really depends on both the particular scales that you're talking about of the 14 and also um, about the client's objectives and what they're aspiring for and what their organization or their context is really asking of them. So for example, for the founder of a company, I think everybody could probably agree that entrepreneurial mindset would be important. But what about, for example, an air traffic controller? Would you want your air traffic controller to have an entrepreneurial mindset? Well, again, it really depends on the scale because one of our scales is execution. And I would personally like my air traffic controller to score very high on execution. So when we're working with clients, we always ask the question, which of these scales are most important to you? How would each of these scales that are relevant help you to achieve your own professional goals and meet your professional challenges? And then we look at the data and explore what it's telling us and what insights are there that could be useful for them. So we go into any debrief or coaching session with a very open mind about what's important for each client and we support them as they have their own reaction to the data. So um, again, one of the, our, the premise really is that context is everything. And, and yet we are going to suggest that for many organizational leaders, it can be very helpful to utilize an entrepreneurial mindset, especially when there's an organizational need to drive growth and innovation. As a matter of fact, the genesis of this instrument and where, where kind of the idea got started was when a large corporate client asked for help in this regard. They were aiming to increase the entrepreneurship, the creative and innovative thinking within their organization. And we didn't find an instrument that really met the need on the market. And so our research team set about in 2010 to do the research and introduced it to the market in 2013. And we've just been delighted with the reaction we've gotten to this instrument and its use. So let's take a look at what does this instrument look like? We're going to show you a sample real quick just so just you can see how accessible it is. So each individual opens up their, their report and they get just a one line definition of each of the personality scales. There are much more detailed definitions that, that are available for people in our development guide. And the development guide actually comes with the report. So people get a more detailed view. But in the report itself, it's a one-line description of the scales. And then they see how their results uh, look relative to the norm group. So on this report, Susan Sample's results are in the red. And the corporate manager norm group is illustrated in the blue, and the entrepreneur norm group is illustrated in the green. And so what do we see here? Um, what I notice right away is that Susan Sample, it looks like she's got some real entrepreneurial strength in limited structure and also in need to achieve and so those would be areas to explore with her. We also see that potentially there might be some areas to look at that are a little lower, such as risk acceptance, 
independence and how those things are affecting her and affecting her ability to achieve her goal. And she might say to us, you know what? My low risk acceptance doesn't bother me at all. I've always been this way. It works fine. And here's how I mitigate risk. But what I really want to explore is she'll choose i want to explore how i showed up on action orientation so we we go there and think about that together so while high scores can be considered entrepreneurial strengths and may be leveraged in, in pursuit of important goals low scores are not necessarily a bad thing again it all depends on the interpretation so our scores are always interpreted within that context let me just say a, a bit about the norm groups uh, that that are here as the frame of reference. So to be included in the corporate manager norm group, individuals had to not own a business, not co-own a business, have a salaried position, and have at least two direct reports. So all of that had to be the case in order for them to end up in our corporate manager norm group. To end up in the entrepreneurial norm group, uh, individuals have to own or co-own a business and answer yes to the question, do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? And they could not be a full-time student. So that's the story on the norm groups. I'll show you too, the, uh, just some, after they go through the, those, the visual graph, they then, this is a wonderful aspect of this report. And those of you who work with other psychometric reports with your clients or your students know that many reports do not include the item level results, but our research and design team concluded that it would be very helpful for recipients of the report to see how they, to be able to look at how they responded to the individual items. And so that's there for them. The design includes several best practices, including incorporating reverse scored items to help keep people focused on the choices they're making about where they respond on the scale. So of the 72 items on the EMP, 31 are reverse scored, and that helps ensure people are reading carefully and and selecting carefully where where they respond on the scale so continuing oh one let's see yeah continuing on with the report you then have the same format for the skills scales as as we did for the personality scales first those one line descriptions the visual in this case again was susan's results we see she's got some real strength and future focus, self-confidence, optimism, and interpersonal sensitivity. And she, um, there's some things that jump out in terms of where she may uh, have some interest in thinking about whether they are relevant, and that would be uh, the execution score, the persistence score. We would inquire how those show up, how they are affecting her, um, you know, progress toward her challenges and goals, and then we'd sort through that with her. So um, same format. Wanted to point out at the very end of the report, you can see there are two links, and they're grayed out just for this uh, presentation, but when you get your own report, you'll see that those are actual links. The first link is to a video that can be especially helpful for people who don't have the benefit of having a one-on-one -on -one feedback session with a practitioner or a coach to go through and understand their results. And this is a video that Dr. Jen Hall, which is one, who is one of the three authors of the EMP, walks you through a debrief process and what you might wanna do, including stopping the video for a few moments as you reflect and look at your results and then restarting. There are resources in uh, at the second link here that's on the last page of the everybody's report, and that is a link to our development guide, which is a resource rich tool that includes uh, some action planning support. But uh, I'll show you just real quick the um, table of contents illustrates that we've got chapters on each of 
the 14 scales, including resources on how you might develop if you want to strengthen those particular scales for yourself. There's reading material that's listed. We also include what does it look like if it's a strength that is overplayed? For example, with myself, I have a very high score on action orientation. And I don't know how many times I'm going to have to learn this in my life, but sometimes it actually is better to take a breath and to sleep on it before moving forward. And so all of the scales can actually be overplayed. And so thinking about that sometimes is helpful for our clients too. And so that's just a preview of what that looks like. So options for addressing low scores, quite a few options. One is you can decide that the scales on which you score relatively low aren't relevant to your job performance, your personal satisfaction, or your place in the universe, and you can forget those. Or you could team with somebody or more than someone with complementary strengths. For example, a lot of times we'll, we'll discover that founders of organizations who are really wonderful at idea generation and future focus may not be as strong at execution or vice versa. And instead of trying to get strong, they often will choose to partner with somebody who naturally has that strength. And so partnering can be a great way to address it. Or if somebody wants to develop in an area where they aren't quite as strong, using the entrepreneurial mindset profile development guide to find resources is a great option. And engaging with a practitioner or an executive coach who has expertise in, in the entrepreneurial mindset and how to develop that. And of course, for students to work with advisors or extracurricular opportunities to develop. So we ask you to please keep in mind, there's no single profile that captures the ideal entrepreneur or the ideal corporate leader or the ideal entrepreneurship student or the ideal human being. The richness and value of the EMP feedback results lie in the unique profile of the 14 scale scores interpreted within your individual and organizational context. So there's no such thing as a good score or a bad score, a good or bad profile. It really all depends on what you are trying to accomplish and what you value. So we want to take a, a few minutes to share with you this resource that, that many of our clients have found especially valuable. And this is the opportunity to run a group or a team report so that a team can explore as a team collectively, where are our strengths? Where are our gaps? What might we want to focus on to develop and become even more effective as a team? So the, the majority of the report looks the same as the individual report. In this case, the red line being the overall group average result. So here we can see that this particular team is very high on action orientation, need to achieve, high on risk acceptance. And then there's some areas that are a little lower that, that may be worth exploring. And so, but what's different about this report as the teams have access to is it also provides a final page, which includes in that uh, second column, which is titled group low score, that shows you that of this particular group or team, the lowest score that any individual has, for example, on independence is a 2.0. And the highest score that any individual in our team or group has on independence is 3.2. And our average is 2.55. How does that compare to the group, uh, the corporate norm or the entrepreneurial norm? The asterisk there by the corporate norm and entrepreneurial norm in those columns those asterisks indicate whether the difference between the group's overall score and the norm group score is statistically significant in its differences. So lots of data to explore with teams and then to help them think about and develop insights and action plans around those. And to help those of you who are interested in, who are working with teams and interested in um, taking advantage of this opportunity, we actually have a team workshop facilitator kit available. 
And it's, it's offered at a reduced rate when you buy it with your certification as an EMP practitioner, you get a, re, a reduced rate. So it's normally 125, but when you bundle it with your certification registration, it's available to you for $100. And it's a complete program which can be duplicated exactly as we've designed it, or it can serve just as a basic framework upon which you would build your own program using the EMP. It can be quite a time saver with content that's fully developed and geared specifically toward teams. It's presented in a module, modularized format, so there's flexibility in terms of content, sequencing, et cetera. There are ready-to-go exercises, a PowerPoint presentation, additional training materials, and then also uh, guidance on logistics for pre and post workshop preparation. So that's all available to you. Now, I know many of you are considering becoming certified practitioners. Some of you have already registered. We're excited to see you in our certification workshops coming up. So what are the benefits of becoming certified? Well, first of all, you learn to interpret EMP results at both the individual and group level. And we work with you on identifying nuances and combined scores that could be useful for your clients and students to understand. You qualify for discounts on all individual and group EMP administrations. You gain access to a password protected practitioner portal for administering and scoring and managing your EMPs. You benefit from a library of resources that are solely for our practitioners, and you join a thriving community of practice with opportunities to attend and lead exclusive virtual practitioner forums to partner with others who share this interest, this passion. And actually, for those of you who are interested in research and research streams, Eckerd College accepts applications for a research grant which advances the science of entrepreneurship. And this program is really seeking to stimulate research and entrepreneurial mindset through the use of the EMP. And so any faculty at institutions of higher education who are EMP certified practitioners are invited to apply and submit proposals. It's a simple process. And you can qualify for up to 50 complimentary individual EMP licenses. Um, and so, and we notify very quickly within five to 10 business days. And those of you who have applied for grants in the past know that that's a pretty quick response time. So in terms of languages available, here's what's available now. And uh, coming soon is Italian that is in the pipeline. So making it accessible to users around the globe. In terms of pricing, we have pricing that is uh, customized for the users. So for those of you who are administering the EMP with students, you actually qualify for the lowest price, which is $25 per administration. And that actually provides access that you can use it for two administrations within the same semester, if you want to, just for that $125 fee. And then if you want to run group reports, it's $100. For those of you working with nonprofit and government clients, it's a little bit higher, but still uh, reduced from the, the, um, the kind of retail rate, you would pay $35. For your administrations. And again, you have access to two administrations per person within the four months. You can see the pricing there. Uh, the pricing for those of you working with corporate leaders, uh, depending on how many you buy, we do offer volume discounts. So that's available to you as well. Uh, the group reports are for use with uh, three or more people. And you do need to buy the individual reports first in order to then be able to run group reports. Uh, with data pulls, for those of you who are doing research, you receive an Excel file, which includes all of your participants' EMP results for the 72 assessment items, along with 
their demographic data. So in terms of the workshops, for those of you who are interested in becoming certified, the workshops are um, three hours and 45 minutes, and we run them six times a year. You can see the months right there, and you are encouraged to apply at our uh, website there. You can see we do have criteria that we've learned is, is very helpful for people to come in with some background in terms of use of assessments, et cetera. We will work with you. We'll consult with you around all of this. And you can see the pricing as well for the experience. Now, for those of you who would like to request a free administration of the EMP, Here's how to do it. You've got the email address right there, and you will receive a free administration within the next two weeks. You do need to, to apply for it within the next two weeks in order to be eligible. And I'll just mention as we're getting close to wrapping up and getting into our Q&A portion of, of today's session is that we are housed within the Leadership Development Institute at Eckerd College, and we offer a plethora of leadership development programs. We are a network associate of the Center for Creative Leadership. We offer many programs that are very valuable for leaders at all phases of growth and development. We do lean, the team building programs. We custom, we offer custom programs. We have a cadre of 30 executive coaches. And then we also have a center of excellence around conflict and mediation. The Mediation Training Institute is housed here at the Leadership Development Institute also. And some of you may already know, some of you may already be certified. We have another proprietary assessment called the Conflict Dynamics Profile. And that actually uh, is, a, is a wonderful tool for helping clients deal with conflict. It looks at the behavioral aspects of conflict. And that tool is actually avail available in both an individual and a 360 format. So we will transition to Q&A in a moment. In the meantime, I just want to thank you for being with us today and hoping that we will have the pleasure of seeing all of you in an upcoming certification webinar and certainly do let us know what we can do to answer any questions you may have in the future. All right, thank you for those of you who stuck around to ask some questions. I would be happy to help. I'm just checking the chat here. And yes, we do have lots of MBA students taking the EMP, grad students, not just folks who are studying entrepreneurship, that's a big part of um, what we talk about, um, particularly for practitioners. It's the mindset, the entrepreneurial mindset. And we strongly believe that that's something that everybody can stand to benefit from, similar to how the poll pointed that out earlier. We all went through COVID and know that at the drop of a hat, we had to suddenly take advantage of the scales that are, are measured on the EMP, nonconformity. We had to think outside the box. We had to take risks. We had to be persistent. There are many things uh, in life that involve an entrepreneurial mindset that doesn't necessarily have to do with owning a business. Um, just checking the, the, the chat again here. Yes, Carolyn, the EMP session that you just experienced, the exploring the EMP, we tend to do about three times a year and it is recorded. The certification workshops we do about six times a year. And although our March 2nd one is sold out, um, we've got another one on April the 18th. Um, Erica, I'm just reading your question. Okay, excellent question. So yes, once you become certified, you can use the instrument as you see fit, okay? Whether you're plugging it into an academic setting, and in that case, either the institution or the students can purchase at that discounted $25 price, um, or as a side hustle, or if you're a coach and consultant, and that is the mainstay of your business, as a revenue generator. 
So once you're certified, you have access to purchase the EMP based on to whom you're administering it. And Maggie showed those three pricing tiers. So you may be a, a corporate coach and consultant, but then maybe on the side, you are going to the United Way and offering to run a workshop or a, a webinar about the entrepreneurial mindset. You would purchase at that nonprofit rate the licenses or the assessment, and you charge whatever you see fit to cover your cost of the assessment and then your expertise and your time. So it all depends. Are you going to do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, feedback session with a, purchase, with a person? Are you going to offer them the opportunity to purchase maybe six months of coaching sessions where you're going to speak to it? You get to set the price for what you charge. When it comes to education, again, we charge the lowest rate to our educators. And that is also for entrepreneurship centers on college campuses. It's for staff, faculty, and students of um, certified practitioners. Let me see, Erica, if I hit everything. Can you micro-credential this with your organization? So the name and logo, we actually provide to you after certification a logo for certified practitioners and encourage you to use it on your LinkedIn profile and your signature. You can go ahead if you have, for example, Adobe Acrobat Pro, you can add your logo to the feedback report. You are a certified practitioner of the EMP at that point, and you can add it to your business. We also have marketing materials available. You end up joining a whole community of practitioners around the world. We've got an exclusive LinkedIn group where you can exchange best practice ideas, look for other research partners and, and other certified practitioners. So all, all of these things become available to you. Helena, I'm gonna move on to your question. Who can be certified? Anybody who has, and you know, we look at these one by one, but generally the criteria, and this is listed on our website as well, someone who's got at least a bachelor's degree and some experience with assessments is preferred or any coursework in psychology, entrepreneurship, but it really can be anybody who is wanting to administer the EMP and use the EMP materials with clients, with customers, with staff, their employees or students. Um, let's see what else. What does the training propose to our clients consist of? Now keep in mind, you're not training your clients to become EMP practitioners. You are the practitioner who is going to be offering the assessment then you can speak to, and, and the EMP comes with, when you get your feedback report, it comes with a development guide and Maggie showed a few sample pages. That has a section on all 14 scales and it talks about how each of those scales are defined, what it means if you have a high score, what it means if you have a super high score to the point where it could be detrimental or you're overplaying a strength, I like to use the passion or persistence scale as an example. And then there's an area for each of the scales if you are lower in that area, and that is it's relevant to your context, then there are tips and resources in how you might wanna develop in those areas. Also in the back section, there's an action planning area where you can help your clients or your students um, with accountability, setting goals, and then referring back to that. Uh, let, me, uh, let me know if that answered your question and anybody else, feel free to unmute yourself and um, you can ask by voice as well. Carolyn, that's awesome that you're, yeah. you're certified in our other psychometric assessment, the conflict dynamics profile, because where in life do you not find conflict? So learning how to deal with that is certainly <laughs> something you can use with everyone, whether it's clients or students, but thanks yeah. for joining us today. Sure, I'm thinking about getting a certified in this as well. Um, I wanted to tell you that some corporations, back when I was working with Harley Davidson and we were developing, designing and teaching leadership programs, we put in there for the senior leaders, a CDP, but 
um, their corporate office had one key person that approved assessments. So okay. it was back when Craig was still there at okay. the conflict center. And I had him talk to the person in the corporate office and give her the CDP and go through all the things we had to go through, but we got it approved. And now Harley Davidson can use it. I'm giving you that um, as a gift because you can even get corporations to allow you to use the assessment, even if they have like a gatekeeper. So it well, is and that's possible. what we usually encourage are the, the 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 leadership and development team members or the HR team members who handle that to have someone in-house get certified as a practitioner and then they can use it with, like you said, senior leadership teams or a manager wanting to use it with their own department or their team, having someone in-house is, is totally what is what is ideal. Uh, of course, for the coaches and consultants out there who contract with companies, the alternative is you can go in and approach them and make them your client. So it works both ways. And that's the beautiful thing. You can plug it into your business or to your organization as you see fit. What other questions can I answer? Thank you very much for the explanations. Absolutely. Uh, to, to make things clear, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, the EMP is an assessment, but Correct. then once you have the results, the idea is to have tra uh, coaching sessions to, to help your clients improve in one or the other uh, aspects of, uh, of the assessments. Is that correct? Lamia, thank you for your question. Yes, so the purpose is to have that benchmark, to have the concrete data so you can see where you fall on the 14 scales compared to the entrepreneur and non-entrepreneur norm groups that are also shown on the feedback report. And then to take that information, right? Because there's the so what factor. So I have these numbers, big deal but it's applying it to your own context. And so whether you are a professor working with students in the classroom, or again, you might be a coach or a consultant or a manager or a human resources um, person, or somebody who's running, for example, an entrepreneur um, cohort, for example, you know, we've got lots and lots of organizations that offer say entrepreneurial uh, training but it's the practitioner who can then choose how to use it. So it can be a one-on-one -on -one feedback session. It can be a, a practitioner in the classroom assigning projects based on results or setting a goal that over the course of the semester, then they're going to take the assessment again to see if they've moved the needle on any of the scales. Uh, or, you know, like you had said, a, a longer term coaching engagement. It's something that you can keep coming back to. Thank you. So if Absolutely. for example, if we, for example, we decide to, uh, for example, assign a group project to enhance one of the, of the metrics of the scale, uh, let's say, um, do you have, any um, training material to help us with, uh, with this project we could propose? That is something that we would love to have more of in the future. Right now it's the EMP development guide and that does have on each of the 14 scales, a whole section for development. So tips on how you could work to develop. Additionally, we also offer a facilitator kit. So if you're working with groups or teams, everybody would take the EMP for themselves and then you could run a group report to see what the collective mindset of the group or team is. And this kit comes off the shelf ready to use so you can run a half day workshop or customize it and break it down. Maybe you're bringing it into the classroom and you want it to be shorter than a half day workshop, but it includes the agenda, all of the activities, a set of the entrepreneurial mindset quote cards that has an activity that goes with it, both virtual and hard cards. 
and it has a customizable corresponding PowerPoint presentation to go with that guide. So those are the things that we are offering right now. Ideally, down the road, we'd love to be able to offer some sort of training on each of the 14 scales, but that's not currently available. The development guide is currently available, as well as that kit that I mentioned. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely, thanks for joining us. And Enrique, I see you're asking about reaching certification status after meeting benchmarks. And, and no, that's not actually how it works at all. Becoming certified is about a 10 um, hour process from start to finish. And it involves you first filling out the application. Once you're paid with the date that you've chosen for a workshop, we send you the practitioner manual that you'll read on your own. Then you'll come to the three hour and 45 minute workshop having taken the EMP for yourself, which takes about 10, 15 minutes. But we do not give you your results in advance because during that certification workshop, you'll experience something that you can simulate with your clients and students in terms of making some predictions, setting some goals, looking at the 14 scales to find the relevance. And then we do a reveal where you'll get back your results. So it's, it's showing you how you can also use. Then after the workshop is over, you'll have a little bit more reading to do the development guide I mentioned, as well as a video to watch. So Maggie, who presented today, doing a feedback session and you reading about doing feedback sessions and interpreting the reports. And then it all culminates with you administering a trial EMP to someone. We want you to test drive the practitioner portal where all your data will live. So we put a free license or a free assessment in there you will then add a friend, family member, or a colleague and send them a link to take the EMP. Their results will be hold it, held as well. And you will get their results and review them in preparation for a final 30 minute one-on-one -on -one over Zoom or phone with another uh, member of the Leadership Development Institute at Eckerd College to confirm that you're comfortable with all of the the key points. And at that point, you'll be deemed certified. And that's when you could have a feedback session and give your trial participants their results. So again, from start to finish, it takes about 10 hours. But the time commitments in, in terms of a schedule is it's the three hour, 45 minute workshop, and then the 30 minutes that's one on one. So you schedule, you know, at a time that's good for you and, and the LDI faculty member. I hope that answers your question. If not, feel free to unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. And Erica, I see you asked about common pricing. You know, we really don't because we have over 575 practitioners in 38 countries around the world. And it really, really varies. So we encourage practitioners to do some market research in their area, because even within a single country, it could depend on, on you know, how rural your area is or the economic state of your area. Um, so we don't dictate that at all. The only thing that we do is state that you shouldn't sell it below what you purchase it for. Um, so there you go. Oh, well, Erica, that, that would be lovely. But yeah, it's not something that we outwardly put out to, to our practitioners. That being said, you're more than welcome once certified to throw a topic like that into the uh, LinkedIn group. The, we've got an exclusive LinkedIn EMP practitioner group to ask things like that. It's the perfect place to kind of be inquisitive, especially for new practitioners to ask some of the veteran ones how they're using it, what do they find, or I encountered a situation like such and such, does anyone have a similar experience? So this could be something you could put in there as well. Anyone else that has a question? If not, I really thank you for, for joining us and I hope that you decide to come along for the ride and uh, get certified as a practitioner. I'd be happy to speak with anybody who has uh, more questions later. 
the e-mindset at ecker.edu email address hits the entire EMP team. So regardless of who is working, who's on vacation, someone will get back to you and we'd be happy to talk about your specific uh, context as well. Uh, Lamia, what would a good complementary training that would be interesting with this EMP? The, the CDP, this, the, this, the conflict dynamics profile that I mentioned, let me put it into the chat so you can Google, because especially if you are working with um, innovation teams, you'll find conflict usually. Uh, but then again, conflict is really everywhere. So I, I would recommend looking into that one. Anybody else? All right. Well, then I hope wherever you are in the world, you have either a good afternoon, evening, or if it's already Wednesday, a good morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Bye-bye.